And there we go. Hopefully you're all seeing that. So yes, um, I will be talking to you about integrated analysis of the iceberg. Uh, Jess Collis was uh, one of the founders of this team, along with uh, Liz Wilhelm, and uh, but she couldn't make it today. But she helped put together the slides, and all credit probably goes to her. So uh, what we'll be talking about, a quick review of the COVID-19 State of Vaccine Confidence Insights Report, and a very brief uh, overview of our methodology, and then review of integrated analysis more generally, and then we'll get into the fun stuff. So uh, to start us off, after the COVID-19 pandemic emerged, media consumption in the U.S. increased by 60% compared to 2019. Screen time averages for adults spiked to over 13 hours per day in March of 2020, and many Americans reported feeling overwhelmed by the amount of information on COVID-19, especially as they are spending more time on screens than ever before. And uh, constantly changing public health guidance and mixed messages from authorities in health also contributed and continue to contribute to a noisy, crowded information environment where it can be difficult for an individual to identify which information is not only accurate and credible, but also fresh and valid. As the pandemic has progressed and vaccines came into the conversation, misinformation began to spread about the vaccines as well, where high vaccine uptake is essential for us to move closer to the end of the pandemic. Maintaining public confidence in the vaccines, vaccinators, and the health systems is obviously critical. Addressing the COVID-19 infodemic and the misinformation around vaccines is paramount given the practical issues with vaccination on a national and global scale. Misinformation about COVID-19 vaccines is especially concerning as it seeks to polarize the topic and exploit people's and communities' fears and distrust of governments and health systems. It also makes it difficult for people to find, distinguish, and act on credible information. However, chasing individual pieces of misinformation in attempts to debunk them ignores the real larger social cultural forces that cause these pieces of information to emerge and gain traction in the first place. Understanding themes of misinformation and the information gaps that exist and then developing programmatic and communication approaches that address these underlying narratives is critical to better addressing the challenges of the infodemic and is especially important in my work to promote vaccine uptake. Uh, social listening tools aren't built to help us track and recommend action around public health crises. So after many late night brainstorming sessions, Liz and Jess um, birthed our insights unit. Um, our insights unit is currently staffed by uh, myself, a lead, a deputy lead, and then four, five analysts. Um, and our key product is our biweekly COVID-19 State of Vaccine Confidence Insights Report. The insights reports are not your average social listening or media monitoring report. It assesses threats to vaccine confidence rapidly and in near real time on a biweekly basis with concurrent data collection and analysis. In addition to detecting myths and disinformation as it emerges, we analyze public perceptions and opinions and identify information gaps and voids and message penetration issues. We utilize a mixed deductive and inductive approach, inductive in that we capture and triangulate relevant themes around vaccines that organically emerge, and deductive in that we make assessments about the theme's relevance to and effect on vaccine confidence using CDC's Vaccinate with Confidence strategy and underlying framework. The report also amplifies actionable next steps focused on communications, outreach, and engagement, and research for CDC, other federal agencies, state and jurisdictions, and really any of our partners. The report looks at multiple sources to help us better understand the communication landscape surrounding vaccines and the COVID-19 vaccines specifically. Um, to develop the report, we look at social listening data from social listening tools. We hand search closed network social media platforms, analyze comments on our own social media channels, monitor the stories and media and track the media requests we see coming into the agency, and then review current polls and new research published in peer reviewed literature. We also analyze calls and emails into CDC's call center, CDC info, and track web metrics, and even pull in third-party reports. And after collecting each of these inputs separately, our team comes together every other week to triangulate and synthesize what we're seeing. This is especially important as it allows us to weed through the noise and figure out what major themes are rising to the top in this hectic digital landscape. Our process has become more streamlined with time, and we're now able to better identify emerging issues before they become major themes. This work is part science and part art as there is no way to determine what necessi necessitates a threshold for a theme or emerging topic. After we review all potential themes, uh, we review all of the team notes and put that together an outline of themes, emerging topics, and continuing topics and circle back with the team. 
specifically, we're gonna focus on this section right here, where we do an integrated analysis and triangulate our data. I'm gonna take a drink. Hmm. Now, as we mentioned earlier, our team has adapted established qualitative research methods for identifying themes and data. We highly recommend you check out the 20, 2003 paper um, by Jeff Ryan and Russ Bernard on techniques to identify themes for more information. They detail 12 techniques for identifying themes and we routinely use at least four of them. Uh, repetition is the first one, looking for themes that come up again and again across our data. Um, then we look for similarities and differences where we compare data points to see how similar or different they are to one another and themes that differ from or are similar to what came before in a given reporting period or even across all prior reports. Uh, indigenous categories is the third technique we use, and this requires paying attention to new or unique technical terms or slang that shows up in our data that might warrant further investigation. And then uh, finally, missing data is the final technique. It looks for where a theme should be present or a conversation could be happening but is not, such as when media covers a vaccine-related development, but social media is silent on it. Or when a discussion that is happening is missing critical information, a silence that can help us identify information gaps that could be triggered with more research or amplified communication. So let's take a quick look at how we do this. Right? We will look at data points from two sources, news media monitoring and CDC info. Uh, we monitor news media using a platform called Meltwater and triangulate with a good old fashioned Google search. Uh, CDC Info, like I said earlier, is a hotline that currently receives seven to 10,000 phone calls a week, all of which are logged. It provides us an additional snapshot of concerns people have at any given time, concerns that are important enough to them to call the CDC about. Normally, our team would review hundreds of data points from each of these sources and 12 others, uh, sometimes many more, for a single state of vaccine confidence report which covers two weeks of social and media monitoring. Let's focus on just five data points each for the purposes of illustrating some of our thematic analysis process. First, let's look for repetition. And I suppose I should give you a moment to read these through before I hop in. Okay. So the First thing we notice um, about these is that there are concerns about children, which came up in about a third in, or came up in the third media story and question four and five in CDC info. There are also non-repeating but unique themes that we might keep an eye on as we continue with the data analysis. They include question one from CDC info about booster vaccines and effectiveness of vaccines in preventing COVID, and question two about pregnancy. And let's dig a little deeper now and do an analysis of similarities and differences in one of our repeating themes to make sure that all the data points are really talking about the same thing. Let's take the efforts to expand vaccine uptake theme. Um, given our purpose and context, we ended up seeing two different kinds of initiatives aimed at increasing vaccine uptake. One kind expanded access to vaccinations by doing things like offering walk-in vaccinations rather than requiring appointments and creating new vaccination sites, such as uh, on location for um, employees. You can see them in blue on this slide. The other type of initiative offered incentives and rewards for getting vaccinated. This included projects like getting free museum tickets or receiving payment to get vaccinated. You can see that in the news media data, points two and four highlighted in black, not blue, um, for us. It was important to distinguish between those two types of efforts because they were likely to and indeed were eliciting different kinds of responses from people. And so they were differently affecting vaccine confidence and uptake. Our framework helped guide how we categorize these sub things. And let's try another technique for identifying themes, the indigenous categories. It's like, a, like I said, um, slang or new use of terms. Um, the one unique sounding phrase is viral shedding and shed the virus, which we might've all heard before. Um, you can see them in blue on the slide in data point three in news media and data point four in CDC info. Um, viral shedding is a longstanding trope in arguments against vaccines. It's a piece of misinformation that resurfaces regularly with successive immunization efforts. It basically says that people who get the vaccine can shed some of the virus they got in the vaccine and transmit it to people who are not vaccinated. This is something that is a small risk with vaccine-based live attenuated viruses. It cannot happen with any of the COVID-19 vaccines since none of them use that technology. Uh, this piece of misinformation makes people worried about vaccine safety. In our small subset of data here, we might note that viral shedding is an indigenous term being used by people. This will warn us to take a closer look at the data to see where the 
same theme coming up without perhaps using the same terminology. Um, it also helps us inform uh, changing of search strings or additional ways that we need to look into this. Um, in question two from CDC Info, the person is talking about her worries that she might get COVID from vaccinating people. And since we know that this relates to viral shedding, uh, we would group it in with the other two data points, even though it's not explicit in there. Okay, and now we get to have the breakout activity. 